The UIM F1H2O World Championship season headed for the very first time to Vietnam to the picturesque coast of Huy Nhon in Binh Dinh Province. The city of Huy Nhon put its best foot forward by organizing a truly spectacular series of events during the amazing Binh Dinh Festival, with two weekends of high-octane nautical motor racing, including the UIM APB Aquabike World Championship. Boasting pristine beaches with tranquil waters, Binh Dinh Province prides itself on firm steps it has taken to become the premier eco-tourism destination of Southeast Asia. From the ancient allure of the Ban It Towers to the tranquil serenity of Bicep Beach, this coastal paradise beckons with its rich tapestry of culture, history and natural wonders. From the rhythmic movements of traditional martial arts to the tantalizing flavors of local cuisine, every corner of this province pulsates with energy and charm. The festivities kicked off with a bang with a remarkable show on a vast stage where more than 150 musicians, dancers and martial arts performers took the stage. The event garnered significant publicity in Vietnam, especially with the presence of Team Vietnam, which boasted last year's defending champion Jonas Anderson and rookie sensation Stefan Arendt. Local fans had ample reason to celebrate. Even the recently elected acting Vietnamese president Vo Thi An Chuan was present at the official opening ceremony for the inaugural Grand Prix of Binh Dinh, Vietnam before the sprint races. A select few had the rare opportunity to experience the thrill and tremendous G-forces of the highest class racing boats riding in the F1H2O two-seater. Now let's see what happened in the previous round in Indonesia. The UIM F1H2O World Championship fired into life with the Pertamina Grand Prix of Indonesia against the stunning backdrop of Lake Toba, a volcanic lake in northern Sumatra. In a fierce back-and-forth qualifying battle, Team Vietnam's defending champion Jonas Anderson beat victory team's Eric Stark to take pole position. Jonas Anderson blasted off the pontoon with the inside lane advantage, but it was victory team's Eric Stark who had superior speed. In an epic battle, the two Swedes were sponson to sponson around the circuit. Eric Stark was at the limit of control but managed to settle the boat, surge ahead and lock in first. But behind in the fight for 10th, Ben Jell fled into the right-hander, squeezing out Zandbergen. Philip Roms had no room and plowed straight into Zandbergen. The young Dutchman barrel rolled and the race was yellow flagged. A cruel blow for Eric Stark, who would give first place back to Anderson for the restart, as the field had not completed its first lap. This time, Anderson held on to first and stayed there for 30 laps into the final lap, with Eric Stark second and Rusty Wyatt third. But with just half a lap to go, Anderson began to slow down with an engine failure. Coming down the final straight, Stark blasted past Anderson into first. But in a sensational move, Rusty Wyatt blazed up on the outside to beat them all and cross the line in first. The rookie became the first Canadian and first rookie in the modern era of F1 to win a race. In the overall standings after the sprint and Grand Prix races, Rusty Wyatt leads with 29 points, four points clear of Eric Stark in second and Anderson in third. There were 18 drivers and 9 teams hailing from across the globe entering the inaugural race in Binh Dinh, Vietnam. With fresh talent joining seasoned champions, the competition soared to new heights in only the second round. Coming in with a bang was Sharjah team's Canadian sensation Rusty Wyatt, who shot the field on Lake Toba with a record-breaking win in his very first F1 race. Now leading the field with a four-point cushion, the pressure is on for the Ontario-based rookie to prove his first race was no fluke. The rookie status is, is good, you know, it, it puts out much more pressure on you and I like the pressure, right? So it, uh, it, it's, it's going to be a big weekend here. We obviously won our first race, so we're, we're going to be fighting for that win again, I hope. His teammate, Philip Roms, was eager to restart the season after his collision with Zandbergen knocked him out of the last race with a badly damaged sponson. 
Eric Stark was second in the Drivers' Championship and entering his second year with the Dubai-based powerhouse Victory Team. The seasoned racer was positioned as a serious contender for the championship crown. Second place in, uh, in Indonesia and second in the World Championship. So, you know, it's just continue getting points. Uh, first practice now was really good. It's really a rat and cat game between me and Jonas. I take him, he take me, then in the end he took me. So, you know, we are right up there. It's going to be a very interesting day and very tight. Stark is joined by teammate Ahmed Al-Fahim after the Emirati served a one-race suspension for his part in a sprint race accident in Sharjah last December. I'm very excited to come back again and racing and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to win again and uh, be on the podium. All eyes were on Team Vietnam as they entered their home race with Jonas Anderson and Stefan Arendt leading the team championship points. It was a small consolation for defending world champion Jonas Anderson, who had tragically lost the previous race in the final seconds. Can his prowess in tuning his own engines get him back on the defensive track? We had a good race in Indonesia. I had the pole position. I should be lucky I finished third. Stefan four and we are leading the, the championship, team championship, so it's, uh, it's good. And Stefan is running very, very well, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Anderson's new protege, Estonian Stefan Arendt, is tied for fourth in the championship. The talented rookie is already proving to be a force to be reckoned with under the guidance of the veteran Swede. Tied with Arendt after race one is last year's Indonesian race winner Bartek Marsalek. The Polish ace continually refines his skills, posing a formidable threat this season. His Norwegian teammate, Moritz Stromoy, skillfully guided the Mercury four-stroke engine hull to a seventh-place finish in Indonesia, securing third place for Stromoy Racing in the team's championship. Tied for sixth in the Drivers' Championship is two-time world champion Sami Celio in Red Devil SMC F1 team. The team is off to a bumpy start after Dutchman Ferdinand Zambergen's DNF in the last race. It's more uh, difficult to, uh, to reach the, the top. Like the last year was feeling a little bit more easy, but uh, everybody uh, gets quicker, eh? so uh, we need to be quicker too. China's CTIC team will be out to improve its fortunes in Guignon. The hard-charging Frenchman Peter Marin incurred a one-lap penalty for failing to maintain his lane at the start in Indonesia. He races alongside 2023's Rookie of the Year American Brent Dillard. Multiple championship winning Team Abu Dhabi faced a rocky start in Indonesia after Alberto Comparato's engine burned out after he wrapped his prop on a discarded buoy. He races with veteran driver Emirati Tani Al Kamzi, who continues in the number five boat. F1 Atlantic team was off to a strong start with Ben Jelf tied for sixth in the Drivers' Championship, racing with Portuguese driver Duarte Benavente. Maverick Racing round out the field with a French duo of Cédric de Guin and Alexander Bourgeau. The circuit on Tinai Bay, Cunyon, features six buoys with one right-hander. The conditions were hot and humid on this fast course with long straights and prone to dangerous gusts. The qualifying session sets the starting grid and progresses through three stages. In Q1, drivers have 20 minutes to record their fastest lap, with the top 12 moving on to Q2, where they have 15 minutes to vie for one of six spots in Q3, the decisive 10-minute battle where the fastest driver claims pole position. In Q1, Peter Marin set the pace, hitting the front early with a time of 45.599. Rusty Wyatt and Bartek Marsalek rounded out the top three. Team Abu Dhabi's Alberto Comparato had overcome his morning engine issues and had just started a hot lap when he lost control and went flying, going end over end and slammed down hard. The yellow flag came out, the young Italian was okay, but would retire from racing for the weekend. Uh, I find a good space, so I just wanted to paint it up and then at the end of the straight I just lost the boat. Yeah, it was the fastest straight of the course, so we were, I was full speed there and then just lost it. Meanwhile, Sharjah team's Philip Roms was still struggling with his rebuilt boat after his crash in Indonesia and was edged out of Q2 by Maritz Stromoy in 12th. Peter Marin continued his strong pace in Q2, setting an early lap of 44.88 seconds. 
Red Devil SMC F1 team Sammy Celio was in the danger zone in sixth, but with under two minutes remaining, Polish driver Bartek Marsalek pipped the Finnish champion, knocking him out of Q3. Eric Stark laid down the fastest lap in the final minutes with a time of 44.414. Daniel Kamzi was out in 10th with engine problems. Q3 fired up with a ferocious battle between the two Swedes, defending champion Jonas Andersson versus Eric Stark. Jonas Andersson was the first to break the 44 second barrier with a time of 43.95. But just minutes later, Eric Stark responded with a lap of 43.657, taking the top spot. The two rookie drivers were in a tussle of their own, but this time with Stefan Arend of Team Vietnam beating Canadian Rusty Wyatt to take third place for a Team Vietnam 2-3 on the starting grid behind victory team's Eric Stark on pole. Peter Marin finished fifth ahead of Bartek Marsalek in sixth. Finally, Paul. You know, after doing this cat and dog um, race with Jonas for a couple of sessions now and races, I'm first, he's his first, you know. I'm so happy and so happy for the team. The boat was really fantastic to drive today and I'm very happy. Over the course of the race event, local organizers welcomed the teams and drivers with a host of gala dinners and dazzling shows introducing the riches of Vietnamese culture. Saturday morning featured two 15-minute sprint races, their starting grids based on qualifying results, providing a crucial background for the championship title with half the Grand Prix points at stake. Eric Stark was on pole for sprint race one, with Rusty Wyatt second, Peter Marin third. The lights go out, they're off. Stark has a great start pulling away with Wyatt and Marin trying to keep up. Sandbergen falls back as he's passed on the starboard side by Philip Roms. Eric Stark leads the field around the first buoy, Wyatt just a boat's length behind, Marin chasing hard in third, and Philip Roms is fourth. Marin has the inside lane past the start-finish line, trying to pass Wyatt on the outside. But the Canadian maintains superior speed around the buoy and maintains second place, keeping the pressure on Stark ahead. Philip Roms is up in fourth, having pipped Zanbergen to fifth, and Brent Dillard in sixth. Rusty Wyatt is pushing to the max, his boat barely touching the water, riding on the raggedy edge, trying to find a way around Stark. Heading around the left-hander, he loses control and flies over Stark's wake. Wyatt manages to rein in the boat and avoid a mishap. And so Eric Stark keeps his lead and brings home 10 championship points. Rusty Wyatt puts nine points on the board, while Peter Marin naps eight in third. My plan was to pull away maybe a little bit more, but Rusty was so quick, so I couldn't, I couldn't build a bigger gap. Uh, so it was a tough race, you know, driving full the whole time. Yeah, it was good. Starks, it's fast, man. Oh my God, I made a couple mistakes for sure in those corners, blew two of them, but it's all right. There's a whole race tomorrow. We got some good points today, so. We make not a bad race. My uh, setting was not the best one. Uh, for this race, so we need to uh, improve and work for a tomorrow race. So we'll see what's happening. The boats line up for sprint race two. Team Abu Dhabi enters their substitute number 16 boat with the talented Emirati Rashid Al Kamzi replacing Alberto Comparato. Rashid Al Kamzi will start last on the grid. It's a Team Vietnam 1 2 on the start grid, Anderson P1, Arendt P2, with Bartek Marshalek in P3. Rashid Al Kamzi's cousin Dani Al Kamzi starts in fifth. The flag goes down, the race is on. Bartek Marsalek launches ahead of the field. What a start for the Polish ace. The two red Team Vietnam boats unable to make up ground. Dani Al Kamzi is nose to nose with Celio to his port side, edging ahead. Marsalek is first to the commitment buoy, but Anderson's inside lane soon gives him back the lead. Stefan Arendt hugs the inside lane as soon as he comes around the turn, gunning for second place, but Marsalek has it. The Stromoy racing driver takes second place, Arendt is third. 
Sammy Celio leads in the battle for fourth with Taniel Kamzi on the outside and Maritz Stromoy who is caught up on the inside. She catches up and nearly passes Al Kamzi on the left-hander, but the Emirati pours on the power down to the yellow right-hander. Now he has the inside lane and shuts the door on Stromoy. Stromoy's troubles aren't over as she is later passed by Ahmed Al-Fahim, but his luck runs out a lap later after his steering cable breaks, forcing him out of the race. Disappointment for the victory driver. Jonas Anderson gains an over 10-second gap back to Marcelek in P2, but with just three laps to go, Bartek Marcelek drives straight off the course with a stuck throttle, and by the time he's able to regain control, it's too late. Stefan Arand moves up into second behind his teammate Anderson. A Team Vietnam 1-2 as the crowd goes wild. Red Devil SMC's Sammy Celio moves up into third. Team Vietnam do not disappoint, taking first and second place, adding 19 points to the team championship board. And Bartek Marsalek salvages fifth. So the boot and the, the engine was good, but uh, I made a mistake in the start. Maybe it's because all it's a lot around me now and uh, it's very, very hot. Uh, I ended up in third after the first lap or so and I kept my pressure on Bartek and uh, unfortunately I think he had some kind of mechanical failure or something. I snuck past him there and uh, Ended up in second. Big, big fighting, nice racing with uh, with Arand most of the time, and uh, pushing till the end because Tani was giving the pressure behind, and in the end we was lucky. Team Vietnam go into the Grand Prix with maximum points. Oh. After a gauntlet of qualifiers and sprint races, the Grand Prix was moments away. Excitement in the air as crowds gathered and packed the VIP areas to watch the drivers battle it out for the first ever Grand Prix of Binh Dinh, Vietnam. Go for the, win. the race would be 35 laps with 20 points up for grabs to the winner. With high heat and winds picking up, all eyes were on Team Vietnam drivers. The pressure was on for the defending champion Anderson to find a way around close friend and rival Eric Stark. The starting grid, Stark on pole, with Anderson and teammate Arand behind in second and third. Rusty Wyatt fourth in front of Peter Marin. Red Devil SMC F1s, Celio and Zanbergen in seventh and eighth. Just moments to go now as crowds jostle for space to witness the spectacle of F1 racing. The race is on. The boats roar off the pontoon. Eric Stark has a phenomenal start. But behind, Arand is swamped in Anderson's wash. The Estonian, unable to see, swerves on the inside. Eric Stark has stormed off at the front, nearly five boats lengths ahead of the pack. Peter Marin in lane five, edging ahead of Rusty Wyatt, but with an aggressive Marcelek to his starboard side. Stark is first to the all-shot buoy. Anderson P2, Rusty in third, with Stefan Arand having dropped back. Peter Marin outpaces Marsalek and leaves the Polish ace behind him and sets his sights on Stefan Arend, but the rookie has the inside lane and defends fourth position. Stark unchallenged at the front, Anderson P2, but has Wyatt closing in on the outside. Arend is barely a boat's length ahead of Marin in fourth. Philip Roms is chasing Marit Stromoy in tenth, but gets hosed down by the Norwegian. Meanwhile, victory team's Ahmed Al-Fahim cuts in on the inside and moves up into 11th. Up ahead, Marsalek now under attack from Sammy Celio to his inside, coming up to the right-hander. Celio is fast around the yellow buoy and locks in sixth, passing Marsalek. Rusty White bears down on Anderson. Anderson cuts hard and Wyatt has to bash through his wash, losing ground to the Swede. Celio up in sixth, Marsalek P7, Daniel Kamzi eighth, Stromoy ninth, and Alfahim up to tenth from twelfth. Bad luck for Ferdinand Zandbergen, who gets shut out by Daniel Kamzi. The Dutchman misses the buoy, passing on the wrong side, and has to go around, dropping him from 8th to 15th. Bartek Marsalek down one position in 7th, now under threat from Daniel Kamzi, pushing hard on the outside. The Amirati cuts to the inside through Marsalek's spray. The two lock horns down the long straight, but Marsalek holds on and keeps P7. Going into lap two, Stark in firm control at the front, Anderson in second, but feeling the pressure from Rusty Wyatt, now up in third from fourth. Rashid Alkamzi, who started in last place, now up four positions in 14th, 
attacking Cedric de Guin of Maverick Racing. Up in fifth, the hard-charging Frenchman Peter Marin is trying to reel in Stefan Arend. The CTIC China driver floats his boat around the corner, looking for a way around the rookie. At the front, Eric Stark now begins to extend his lead, the victory team driver eager for a first place after his brief lead was dramatically taken away in the last race in Indonesia. Stefan Arend on the defensive with Marin closing in. The Frenchman has the outside lane when suddenly Arend begins to slow down. The Team Vietnam driver pulls over with harsh vibrations. Disappointment for Arend as his canopy flies open and Marin moves up to fourth. Uh, I broke the propeller to be honest. That, uh, I thought it was the engine at first and I stopped really fast but it, was, uh, it ended up being the propeller. We lost the blade, I think we hit something in the water or something like that. Going into lap 13 now, the battle for 10th heats up. Brent Dillard is pressing up on Team Charges, Philip Roms. The Finn holds on as the two boats negotiate around back marker number 9, F1 Atlantic team's Ben Jelf in 15th. Roms leads Dillard, the duo zooming up to another pair of back markers. The melee of four boats taking the left-hander with Peter Merwin trying to lap them all on the inside. Philip Roms is on the outside. Oh, he goes airborne up and over. Brent Dillard collides with Roms and sends the young Finn flying. The race is yellow flagged. Thankfully, both drivers are okay, but they're both out of the race. Brent was coming from the outside. I was trying to, I was trying to turn, but then he made the side to turn. I think he thought he left me the space, but I had the ball there. And he was outside, I was in the middle, and then he broke the boat again, boat again. Bad luck for Team Sharjah, who have to fix this boat yet again. The boats line up for the restart with 15 laps to go. There it is, green flag. Anderson makes a move on the outside, but Stark is ready and holds the lead. Behind Peter Marin does the same, attacking Rusty Wyatt for third. The Frenchman is nose-to-nose -nose with the Canadian around the left-hander. Marin has a speed up to the next buoy. He does it. Marin passes Rusty Wyatt, who gets roughed up in the Frenchman's spray. Meanwhile, Celio has Marshalek attacking on his starboard side. The Stromoy racing driver surges forward around the corner. Bartek Marshalek takes fifth. Sammy Celio's troubles aren't over as an aggressive Daniel Kamzi takes the inside line through the yellow right-hander. The Team Abu Dhabi driver is going all out down to the next left-hander, blasting through spray. The Emirati guns it down the straight in a drag race with Celio. Daniel Kamzi has it. He beats Celio and drops the fin down to seventh. Al Kamzi is now sixth, up from ninth. Ten laps to go now. Stark is first, Anderson second, but behind him, Peter Marin is pushing it to the limit. Marshalek back up in fifth, Alkamzi P6, Celio P7, and Stromoy with the only four stroke of the field up in eighth. Eric Stark going strong, having never let up the lead, but with just a few laps to go, can he finally bring victory team a win? The laps wind down and Eric Stark crosses the line in first. Victory team finally get their much deserved place at the top of the podium. Jonas Anderson is second, and Peter Marin scores valuable points in third. Rusty Wyatt, with another impressive race, finishes in fourth. Marcelek fifth, and Al Kamzi rounds out the top six. Ahmed Al Fahim ninth in his first race back with two crucial points. It's definitely victory team's day as they shoot to the top of the team championship standings. One point clear of Team Vietnam with Sharjah team third and Stromoy racing fourth. I make a very good uh, restart. I have a lot of speed and I was uh, not enough uh, near him that I can uh, turn a little bit more and after I can close him uh, to the next boy. So it was a very nice uh, battle. I'm very happy uh, for the whole um, team who works very hard. Yeah, I mean, I had a quite bad start today compared to yesterday and I didn't have any chance to overtake Eric in the, in the start. I mean, I know Eric, I, he lived with me and I train him, so <laughs> it's, uh, he's uh, one of the best drivers in the championship and uh, so I was just trying to push as much as possible. 
Ah, what a race! You know, I had really a good start, um, but then in the, the first straight, I, the wind was really picking up, so it took it really took the boat, and it was like was someone up there that just saved me because you know it got quiet in the boat and you know I couldn't do anything. I just hope it was gonna land again. And it, first win with victory. Uh, Ahmed was uh, was super happy. It's first time for him. It's, we are a really, really good team right now, and I feel really strong for this season. In the Drivers' World Championship standings, Eric Stark takes the lead. Eight points clear of Rusty Wyatt, who is second with 47 points, tied with defending champion Jonas Anderson. Bartek Marsalek is fourth, Peter Marin fifth, and Team Vietnam's rookie Stefan Arend rounds out the top six. The F1 H2O World Championship flag was officially handed over to the hosts of Round 3, Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy. See you there for the next round of the UIM F1 H2O World Championship.